morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Corey Dowds of I the Veda. Today I want to talk about Jupiter and Saturn conjunct. Also, I hope you enjoy the sound of these 17-year cicadas. They make quite a nice sound to meditate to in the morning, if you ask me. <clears throat> now, all right, so Jupiter, Saturn, conjunct. The first thing you need to know is that what we're talking about in Vedic astrology is these avashtas, where any time a planet is conjunct Saturn, it is said to be starved and feel a sense of lack. So that is going on in this avashta, but what's interesting is then there's another kind of opposite avashta. Whenever a planet is with Jupiter, it's said to be delighted or mudita and happy. So both of these are simultaneously going on when we have this avashta. So what's really interesting is like, for example, when there's an old technique in the old Indian books that says that, you know, when Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct, Jupiter's dasha does not go well, but Saturn's dasha does go well. And that's because in the Jupiter dasha, you're feeling starved by Saturn. But then in the Saturn dasha, you're feeling delighted by Jupiter. And all your woes and worries and suffering, Saturn is being helped. So, it's a very interesting placement. Now, again, remember that in Vedic astrology, we're not talking about a certain, like, within three degree conjunction. If Jupiter is in the same sign as Saturn, Jupiter can be at one degree of Capricorn and Saturn can be at 29, and they're still doing this. In, and it's not going to be as true as if they were lined up directly by degree, but it's still true. It's the same with uh, the idea of houses. Anytime Jupiter is in the second sign from the Lagna, he's in the second house. It's like if you were to walk into a room. Uh, if Jupiter walks into your living room, you're going to notice he's there, whether he's at the door or at the end or in the middle, right? So it works like that. So these people basically have to balance, like, um, they have to, you know, from the sense of uh, your purpose, your sense of purpose is Jupiter. When you have this, you don't feel like it's, it's harder to have a sense of purpose. It's harder to um, feel like you have a destiny that's easy to sort of unfold. But then on the other hand, from the standpoint of Saturn, you're going to survive. Like your ability to survive and make it and deal with suffering is actually really lucky. Um, like recently I had a client, it was actually kind of funny. <clears throat> Six, no, like a, a year ago maybe I had a client who I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, with this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, you would be able to survive any kind of like pandemic or deadly situation that happened. Then he wrote me back. He was in the middle of the pandemic in, um, in Europe somewhere and he had to be involved because of work, but he ended up being fine. So they tend to be protected and buffered. Jupiter tends to buffer you and protect you from a lot of the toughest suffering in life, but at the same time, you tend to, you tend to not have a sense of Jupiter as healthy as others. You have not as much of a sense of purpose or dharma or creative inspiration or you get like this goal in your mind, you go for it, then after a month it just Ugh, it just burns out and um, so these people really have to work to like keep augmenting Jupiter um, through mantra prayer practice all the different things gemstones whatever but the trouble is is they don't want to do that a lot of times because they feel so much of this lack it's a real hopeless despondent placement it's very very common to be an atheist when you have this placement or to not believe in God but that's not always the case but it's that sort of feeling like hopeless like there's no you know existentialist nihilisticness all that stuff is very common with this placement um, <clears throat> so they have to try much harder to find meaning and purpose in their life especially in the Jupiter Dasha um, like for example I know someone who had this and he was in a band he was really good in the band it was in a great placement for being in a band but he just couldn't get along with the bandmates, he couldn't get them to practice, it just felt like it wasn't worth it, you know what I mean? But he should have just kept going, um, but he didn't want to, he just gave up. It didn't feel like it had a purpose, or did you know, he didn't feel enough of that Jupiter energy when I talked to him about it. It's not worth the hassle, you know what I mean? It's, they, it's just, uh, it feels too difficult to complete their vision in life, which is Jupiter. But then from the other standpoint, from Saturn, just plain surviving is like really easy, but they have to get past that and not just be focused on just surviving. <clears throat> the real purpose of life, you know, is to, to grow and to become self-realized and to recognize our connection to God. <clears throat> and they can struggle with this. 
Not always. It depends on the situation. Like if Saturn is your ruling planet, then it's going to be delighted by Jupiter. You're going to be more likely to recognize the need for that. But a lot of people who have this placement will really need some serious, healthy change internally, spiritual growth, psychological growth, but they won't want to go for it a lot of times. But if you have it, you really should go for this um, if you have this placement. The other thing is that um, like uh, Jupiter is kind of like your higher self. And so it's like <clears throat> with this placement, you can recognize that like, like suffering is kind of your higher self just recognizes the need for suffering to grow. So they can actually be very mature about handling suffering all the time. So there's a lot of different ways that this placement can go depending on the rest of the chart. Um, <clears throat> another thing is like, like if you're getting, if Jupiter's weaker and Saturn is stronger, then you're going to have a lot more of that doubt and hopelessness and despondency. And so the client will come to you and be like, has a difficult, like I can't find my purpose. I don't have a good career. You know, like if it's in the 10th house, it'll be like, you know, I just don't even see the point in having a job. I don't even see the point in having a career. If it's in the seventh, I don't even see the point in dating or being in relationships, you know? Um, and you have to like help encourage them to overcome that lack, but it can be very tough. Um, and they really need to just work harder to be inspired um, and work a little bit harder to, to, to be creative and to, you know, watch self-help videos about things like that um, or get a reading and just like get more specific advice about that. But um, yeah, that's one angle of it. And then... Uh, <clears throat> Yet, like I was saying, um, you can suffer more contentedly with this placement, actually, because of Saturn, your plan of suffering being helped by Jupiter. But the other, and then here's another cool angle of it, is from the Saturn angle, um, you can see a lot more of the meaning in suffering, you can see a lot more of the beauty in suffering, you can see a lot more of the divine grace behind suffering. Um, you see the bigger picture, so therefore you can, you can kind of handle the tough situation you're in with a little bit more detachment. Um, so if they're both, you know, stronger planets, that's one of the higher sides of it. Um, and it brings out more of an appreciation for the simple things in life. So if they do get into spirituality, they can be like a very Zen or um, simple nature kind of philosophy that they like. And it brings more contentment and joy around one sense of like lax. And uh, because they kind of know that suffering is connected to their spiritual destiny. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting. Like when you have a plant with Jupiter in, in your chart, it's almost like in this life you're giving a reward. You're being like rewarded with this planet going to work out well. Um, and then the, then whenever a planet's with Saturn, it's almost like, okay, this is your incarnation to, to just kind of like, oh, you got to like deal with that tough karma with that planet. Like people who have Saturn conjunct Venus will have tough time in relationships and it's like part of their incarnation, um, to burn off that negative karma. And so in this placement, it's very tricky and, conf and, and kind of can seem contradictory because you have both of these things going on, but it's really fascinating. And I also noticed that these people, um, like I've talked to astrologers, other people that have this placement, they'll always be very convinced that like the truth is very, very hard to find a lot of times. And then, yeah, then that will contradict their, this other side where they want to be very simple about things, but then other things they'll see it as there's no way I could just know the truth or there's no way you could do this without doing, you know, oh, you need to do a thousand Hanuman Chalices before you could ever even think to like, to read the Ramayana or something. Just like these crazy um, ideas and dogmatic superstitions that people create can sometimes be coming from a person with kind of a messed up Saturn Jupiter thing in their chart, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot you can do though to work on this placement. And here's the thing is that this placement basically means you have a lifetime of spiritual work to do, of working on yourself, of psychological work. So you're the type of person who you get a reading and you feel really good, but then after a month it wears off, but you have to like keep getting readings. Don't run around to a bunch of different people, but you have to keep going with that one therapist or that one thing, or you have to keep pushing and keep going with it because it's just not, your Jupiter's with Saturn, you know, it's just not going to grow and just grow like a beautiful, perfect garden. It's a garden that you've got to keep working at and keep tending to it. And or because weeds are getting in there constantly. Um, and so like, oh, for a woman who has this, Jupiter can be the husband or the partner. And so they'll have to keep working on 
themselves and then in the same way they'll attract different partners and keep working on making the right choices with those partners and you know being more selective or whatever and not just impulsively choosing a guy because of low self-esteem or a sense of doubt or a sense of you'll never find anyone better you know so these can be tough but they are um, able to be overcome and I would imagine quite a lot of people watching astrology videos might have this because of what I'm saying um, this is a chart where you're going to have a lifetime of self-help and self-growth and you should keep going, keep going to the massage therapist, keep going to the yoga classes, just, just keep trying to keep going, going with it. Um, and it's also worth noting that we have this conjunction right now and so a lot of people are very unhappy just in general because Saturn is conjunct Jupiter, our planet of contentment and happiness. And it's interesting that it's happening in the sign of Capricorn, the rulers in the world, because we've seen a lot of, um, you know, a lot of tough things happening to celebrities and rulers over the last um, year compared to other years. So um, we've all just got to hang in there. We've got this placement. Okay. All right. Take care, you guys.